I want to congratulate both of you on on Summit Fever. Wow. Uh, not not only is this just a thrilling uh, film, but I would imagine, Julian, that uh, uh, this was a headache to shoot. I mean, it, with, with the, where, where you put your camera, all of that must have played into a, a massive uh, stroke. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I mean, Fre Freddie, Freddie, and everybody. They, you know, we used to always laugh over a drink at the end of the day, whatever, over my little storyboards, my my cartoon pictures. I mean, Freddie's seen them for years, but I mean, he'll he'll back me up here. Every sequence was sort of drawn out, matched out, and then you know, I'd work out, you know, which are your wides, your helicopters, which stuff we get here. For example, when Freddie and I actually did climb the real summit of the real Matterhorn, not doing sort of a fake. You know, we went to do the real thing. You know, it was it was all really just down to meticulously planning it, and then just um, you know, just surrounding yourself with some really really good people, guides, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to make that happen. So it was just, yeah, you know, it's just planning, like anything, like you know, building, building, building a flipping engine or something. You know, it's, it's just it's just all these little components, but they sort of make up a, a big whole. But yes. It's tough because of the different times of year you have to shoot different you know peaks because of how dangerous not dangerous etc it is but um yeah yeah uh, yes <laughs> in a long <laughs> answer yes definitely um a thought-provoking way to do mm -hmm. that freddie are you are you drawn to more athletic roles these days to be honest it doesn't really feature in my um thinking when taking on a role i think primarily i get excited about the character and the writing and that was certainly the case with this script um julian and i came together maybe you know almost four years ago five years ago now and the first thing we talked about was of course you know who this guy was michael um and then it slowly started unfolding that julian might want me to do all, all the climbing for real and i'm certainly someone who not someone who shies away from adventure so it was an amazing experience to get to do that but um no, I wouldn't say I, it, it's the action that draws me to it. And, and working with Ryan Felipe, I mean, that's that's got to be a, a joy. Oh, of course, man. Like, we've all grown up watching him, and he's a consummate professional, as well as just a really, really, really cool guy. And, um, you know, so humble and really good actor. And very quickly, we all created quite a collaborative and family environment around set. So, um, no, he was an absolute pleasure. Just to go with what Freddie was saying, but just to add something completely non-controversial and to just reiterate, what an absolute gentleman. You know, I go into battle with Ryan or Freddie uh, any any day of the week, any time they'll have me. Um, I, I really would, um, but you know, Ryan had just a, a wonderful attitude. He knew that we wanted to do as much as possible for real. And he really took that on board and he was he was a real gentleman and he had this wonderful sort of experience and aura with with everybody. And yeah, you know, I'd work with him again in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Love him to death. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, when you talk about chemistry between characters, uh, there, there was a gr a great chemistry between everybody on this uh, on this project. And, and it seemed like <coughs> you were all old friends, you know, doing this. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not the case, is it? I mean, the, that that just is movie magic. Agree. It happens. I mean, Freddie, Freddie and I, Freddie and I became old friends. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, we we'd climb the mountain together. We'd climb the Don de Jean together. We'd, you know, we've we've had beers in a pub in Snowdonia, soaked <laughs> through to the skin. <laughs> um. So we we did. I, I think Freddie and I genuinely sort of became friends because you just do over such a long period of time. But but all the other cast were. I think they were of a similar mindset to us, uh, you know, and I think, and, and then it was, I mean, it's a little bit of a lottery when you roll the dice. Sometimes there is a bad egg here and there. I can honestly say there was none of that on this film. They all, they all, they all bonded because it was, you know, you know, a producer once said to me, it's got to be an adventure, you know, and you either get on board and, and become with it or, or, or it doesn't work. And I thought, I thought they had a wonderful chemistry and camaraderie all of all of the actors and actually all of the crew and all of the crew with all of the actors mm -hmm. um i think i've covered all bases <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> freddie is there is there a particular scene in in summit fever that you're particularly proud of i'm proud of all of it really but um i think some of the scenes i'm i'm most proud of are probably towards the end 
which are kind of the ones of heightened emotional states um just because that can so easily go both ways but i think again because of the nature of this shoot and the time i've spent on it i really did feel so connected to the character and and the story that when it came to you know imagining deaths or reimagining deaths um it was really quite quite emotional for real and so i felt like the the truth of those moments came through most at the end so i am pretty proud of those scenes julian i would imagine you would have to audition your crew as much as auditioning your cast for something like this because they have to be able to climb mountains too <laughs> yeah they do but i mean i kind of i kind of called myself the kind of high altitude cameraman and, and, and stuff like that so certainly like when you go up the matterhorn you can't take uh, the caterers and the sound people and you know and, and uh, you know i mean that was literally freddie and me and danny ullman who was doubling for jean pierre and red and uh jean McCune, who was my uh you know climber because you climb in twos mm -hmm. and i remember danny took the body of the camera and um uh john took the lens um you know 16 to 42 mil lens and and we literally, we practiced in the, you know, in, in the hut long beforehand, how we were going to fix this lens to the camera body on a foot wide precipice with a 3000 foot drop down the North face and a 4000 foot drop down the South face. So that, that, so funnily enough, sometimes you can have your most creativity when you are just with a camera, you know, and I remember I was watching through some of the footage the other day and I was just doing a couple of extra shots of Freddie looking around and I went, okay, Freddie, just look in the distance. Uh, look over at the vice horn, and Freddie goes, "Yeah, which one's that?" <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, it was just you know, I mean, one of my awful bits of directing, not realizing not everyone quite knows the geography. But no, we we did have um, a sort of you know. So sometimes we were like a one man crew, yeah. and then sometimes we were you know a, a full crew. But you know, obviously, when you go to the very precarious um, places, then then you you really do have to minimalize. Tony, I just wanted to point out something that Freddie was saying about you know, his scenes near the end. And there's sort of particular scenes where they come out of a crevasse and you know, one of the characters is very badly injured and uh, Freddie and him uh, have, a, have a couple of scenes together. And I was chatting with my producer Tiernan and he said, Dom, he said, the only difference between this and a 50 million pound film right now is that this isn't fake snow and we're not about to open the doors to the studio and bring the catering van it. We're up at 2000 meters, uh, you know, in such thick snow, you know, and this was, what was this? This was the beginning of May and it was, it was going down to temperatures about to about, well not out, but down to minus 12. Mm. I don't know what that is in America. I'm to about minus 12. It, it's right? cold. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> we call it, it's pretty right. cold down right. here. Yeah. yeah, but the point is, is I think, you know, I, I don't know, you know, Freddie's a, a, a great talent in his own right. And the, and the truth of the matter is, you know, especially when people do auditions and stuff, you know, I, 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 when I look at auditions, I'm very happy to see them done on an iPhone. And I don't mind if they're done in someone's bedroom, because a true actor can do that. But I do feel that, you know, if I can give anything to help Freddie, I <laughs> put him in minus 10 degrees plus and, you know, have him, you know, up in this real environment, it's only going to help, I assume, for anyone anyway. You know, that's just a point I thought that there's so much of it was, you know, in real places. Freddie, in our final moments we have, what do you think audiences are going to take away from watching Summit Fever? Yeah, it's an interesting question. <clears throat> I think something we talked about quite a lot, Julian and I, was that this was a film that everyone could relate to. You know, you didn't have to have climbed a mountain. You didn't have to have been even in the mountains, but everyone can relate to falling in love. Everyone can relate, relate to being young. Everyone can relate to doing something you shouldn't. Everyone can relate to doing something you should. And everyone can relate to dreaming. And I think no matter who you are and what your position is, it should be something that people relate to and feel. Um, so I hope people come away feeling inspired or sad or happy something <laughs> and i think they will it's a it's a it's just a brilliant film I, you, I would just like to, I'd, I'd like to quote that policeman in hot fuzz and say what he said um <laughs> I, I would um, i would add i would just add just to reiterate what freddie said is um 
you know, just in a very brief, quick story, my wife read the script uh, a few years ago and she goes, oh, I love this, you know, it's really good fun, but doing a period film is going to be so expensive because, you know, how are you going to get the lift to look like the 90s? Because it's, it's all changed. I said, it's not set in the 90s. She said, oh, I read it like that. I went, that was because you were a ski instructor in the 90s. So it was quite interesting that she'd immediately locked into another time period. And the truth is that with not very much changes, this film could have been set in 1960. It could have been set in 1975. I do think it has a, a, a timeless quality, which, which is, of course, you know, you know, which the mountains bring anyway, I think. So, you know, yeah, you know, and then everything that Freddie said very articulately as well. Well, a, a great story is a great story, no matter where it's set. And so that's that, that's great for the audience to interpret and, and all. But I'll tell you what, I mean, I'd love to see a documentary on the making of this film <laughs> because it, it oh must have been it must have been something so different from what you what you're used to, my, uh, uh, Julian. Uh, yes. Yes, it was. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, the fact that you're having to put acclimatization acclimatizing into a schedule uh yeah everything about everything about it was different but in some ways that felt very very freeing you know um uh, you know and then um yeah the making of would be a fascinating thing to watch or to read about you know you know maybe one day i put a little book together some uh, you know or we put a documentary yeah it absolutely depends how much we want to tell them julian <laughs> <laughs> well there you go yeah, well no uh, always, well actually no but leave a bit of it to the to the mystery as well you know um definitely you know i mean i've got a few cool photographs and stuff but you know well yeah anyway tony yeah a lot you know i could sit here and talk for ages but you know what it's one i'm down in cornwall right now and it's mm -hmm. half time i just got the children back from the beach and i've just been given this ah. you know, I'm, I'm, yeah i know it's okay because it's it's almost five o'clock here and i'm gonna have a oh a little glass of white wine it's gonna be epic um, <laughs> Well, have a have a have a beautiful evening, both of you, and yeah. and and just you. Know, like I said, it's. I, I think people are just going to gravitate to this. I, I, I think it's it's just a, an exciting edge of your seat, but it's got so much more in it. And I don't give away movie plots or anything. I just want people to discover it, and 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 go with it because that's what we should do with films. And and uh, uh, it was a pleasure talking with both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day and enjoy your wine. <laughs> uh, I will. And Tony, have a wonderful day as well. Freddie, I love you. We'll do this all again. Yes. Yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> Take care all. Right, bye, bye bye. bye.